I'll cut to the chase here. VR is fucking baller. The enhanced perspective it gives you in games, on top of the freedom to use your hands how you see fit, really upped the feel of almost every game I was able to play in VR. Outside of a few exceptions, I found that I genuinely enjoyed most of the games more in VR than I did in the pancake version, but with enough caveats that I still wouldn't say it ends up being the definitive way to play, because generally it ends up being a harder way to play many games since you really can't beat the precision of a mouse. I would also say that I gel especially well with VR because it allows me to do things that I kind of always done in my head to begin with. The free hand and head movement on top of the enhanced immersion and feel really lets you get into the experience and throw in some dumb acting to make the experience that much dumber. I'd say the best way to enjoy VR is to not be afraid to look like an idiot and do stupid shit. After all, you're already a dude sitting in a room with a TV strapped to his face while dual wielding a holy Wiimotes, so you already look like a fool. Why not commit at that point? Alright, motherfucker. Let's do this. But before I go into the kinds of games that I've been experiencing over these last three weeks, I'll just quickly go over the pros and cons of the specific heads that I have. As the title indicates, I have the Quest 2. But keep in mind, I'm not a tech guy, and I won't really be going into a whole lot of specifics. This is just mostly a quick rundown, and the rest will be my impressions with playing the games on this headset. So, for the pros, it doesn't really require any setup or even a PC. The only thing you need is halfway decent lighting. Even then, you don't even need that at all if all you want to do is use the browser or watch YouTube. It's also completely cordless, so you can take it anywhere easily, or use it as a personal big screen video player that isn't disruptive to anyone nearby in total darkness. Well, except for one thing. And the image quality is pretty good overall with a barely noticeable screen door effect in my experience. Of course, I don't really have much of a frame for comparison with other headsets, but I personally found it pretty good. But now for some of the more pertinent cons. The default strap and face guard are serviceable, but not great. Honestly, expect to replace them. Also, this does not come with the link cable to hook up to your PC, so you either need to order one or buy a virtual desktop and hope your Wi-Fi is good enough. Also, do not get the Oculus cable. Buy a third party, because it does the job just as well at almost one-fourth of the cost. 80 fucking dollars before shipping for a goddamn cable is kind of insane. And the battery life, while it's untethered, is kind of dog shit. Two to four hours, depending on what you do, it's just not much at all. You can buy battery packs for it, but it's just another additional cost. And unfortunately, while it's tethered to your computer, you still have to worry about battery life. It just drains significantly slower, so it ends up being closer to 12 or more hours on a full charge. And lastly, Facebook. That's it, really. If it wasn't for Facebook, I would give this headset a resounding, yeah, fucking buy it, due to the quality for the price point ratio, but... It's made by Facebook, and because of their awful practices, if that bothers you, then that can be an unfortunate deal breaker. So with that out of the way, let's jump into what kind of experiences you can have with this. For this video, I'm only really going over games that are non-VR games with VR versions, official or otherwise. This is mostly because I'm currently more interested in games that are built without the restrictions of VR in mind and later being given support for VR to enhance them with the strengths of VR. I will give one last disclaimer before I talk about the game since it does impact some of the footage. I have a physical condition which makes standing without constant walking really painful, so I'm sitting down in a really low office chair until I was able to get a swivel bar still for VR. Not only will some of the footage make me appear like I'm half the size I normally would be in some of these games, but in some instances I also have limited range of motion to avoid scooting around in my chair too much since I'm about one foot away from a deadly case of knee slamming into a wooden corner syndrome. Alright, enough prattling on. Time for Minecraft! By default, this game does not support VR. This can be done by installing Vivecraft, which provides you with a full VR version that you can play on any multiplayer server. The only downside is that if the server doesn't support Vivecraft, some features just will not work, like teleportation movement and accurate aiming for bows, since the arrows just come out of your head instead of the bow itself. 
this can be a bit of a turnoff since uh, locomotion is an ongoing issue for VR due to nausea. I'm very lucky to say that I have absolutely no problems whatsoever adjusting, so I won't really be going into issues with nausea and the like, as I generally have had no issues with that. So, Minecraft, along with the 1.18 update, provides an excellent example of wonder through the sheer scale of everything. It's awesome to truly get a feel for how big some of these caves can be when you get to see them from this perspective. It also provides some nice extra immersion with a little bit extra details, like being able to eat items by putting them up to your face, having to knock arrows manually for each shot, and actually being able to physically mine. This last one is really jank and only works when your pick makes physical contact with a block, so the range is actually really tiny. But it's so cool to just be able to swing around your pick and break things. At one point I accidentally broke a block that was behind me while I was preparing to swing at one in front of me. But other than that, this is just Minecraft through and through. Some aspects of the combat are a little bit harder, like fighting Endermen because they teleport around you constantly, but overall it's really good without really changing too much to fit the game, and that extra level of immersion and perspective just feels so good. Next up is Risk of Brain 2. This is a third person roguelite with the goal of going from stage to stage, scavenging items, and just surviving as long as you can or reaching the final boss. Keynote, this was a third person game, and is very much designed that way. Officially, it doesn't have a VR version, much like Minecraft, until someone made a mod for it. This mod, however, is genuinely phenomenal. It definitely makes the game a little harder, since you have a much more narrow perspective and this is a game where enemies spawn all around you, but you can get used to it somewhat. After a few hours, me and my friend were pretty decent at the normal difficulty. Like Minecraft, this game offers a scale that doesn't really hit you until you play it in VR. I even played this game with a first person mod prior and it was alright, but it didn't convey things as well as it did when you put it in VR. When you're staring at this character select screen, you really start to notice how tall some of these characters are and how big many of the objects are. The captain is a towering 8 foot tall behemoth compared to this probably normal human sized huntress. Or the fact that the engineer's turrets are actually as big as him, which only registered to me until now. The same goes for the enemies themselves, the smallest enemy is as big as you and they only get bigger. Normally when I see these basic Lemurians running around, I just see easy fodder. But in VR, when I see these six human sized lizard men charging at me at the same speed as me, it's mildly unnerving. But on the other hand, when you're playing a character that's taller than them, you really do feel yourself towering over them. But what's cool is the level of detail this mod has put in. It isn't just some bootleg port, they go all the way. They made unique models for a few abilities, added special gesture controls for melee characters, and made some really smart decisions with how they handled movement abilities. Some examples include the engineer not having a visible weapon as he fires from the rocket pods on his shoulders, so they added a red button to the palm of his hand so when you hold the fire button, he presses it down with his two middle fingers to charge. Also, seeing all these explosives fly out in VR is kind of amazing. This attack is one of my least favorite in the game, but when I see it in VR, it kind of feels fucking awesome. And that's another thing that I never realized about VR. Some of my least favorite characters kind of became ones that I enjoyed a lot thanks to that new perspective impacting how they feel. This one half melee, half range character who revolves around spreading damage over time is one I can't say I cared about much, but going full melee on this dude turned out to be super fun when I'm physically launching myself into the air in order to try and swipe at these annoying as fuck aerial enemies. Another detail is on Bandit who has a big shotgun. If you bring your second hand close to it, you can now two hand it for improved stability. This is great because he has an alternate version of this gun where it becomes a long range rifle. The only thing that makes me sad is that when you use a special ability to pull out a revolver and just blast someone to reset your cooldowns, it doesn't appear in your left hand like it does in the third person animations. I fully understand why since you're already aiming with your right hand, but it would feel so fucking cool if you could just pull out a revolver with your left hand and just blast someone and go back to shooting with your right hand. That said, this game will likely make the more VR sensitive people out there very sick. There's almost no comfort measures outside of an obstructive border when you move and snap turning, and Risk of Rain 2 is a very fast game. At the start, it's okay, but in a good run, you have to get a lot of movement speed if you want to survive, so you're just running at incredible speeds. 
Also, there's Loader, who has a grappling hook that allows you to fling yourself at massive speeds to punch people in the face. It feels so good to me, but I can imagine the more sensitive people are probably vomiting just thinking about it. But aside from details like that, this is just harder Risk of Rain 2. It still plays the same, it just feels so much cooler. That's gonna be more or less the running consensus with the rest of these games. They all play roughly the exact same, but they just end up being a bit harder with a different feel to them, and usually for the better, even if they don't become the definitive ways to play it. After that, we have Payday 2. I have a slightly more detailed one minute review about how good of a port it is, but in essence, the port is very good. They reworked so many aspects of the game to work in VR, even down to mechanics that you just can't do without VR, like being able to use melee and your weapons at the same time, or being able to shoot while interacting with things. It can feel a bit weird since weapon accuracy is unchanged from the pancake version, so some weapons, you can definitely feel how inaccurate they are. But the biggest strength about Payday 2 in general is the feel, and by extension, the VR version is even better for that. By itself, just walking up to a group of cops and blasting them with a shotgun loaded with dragon's breath shells is pretty good fun, but turning the corner, pulling out a minigun, manually two-handing it, and then just holding down the trigger until everything is dead is just an amazing fucking feeling. The movement can be handled almost entirely via free movement with the stick, but there's also an option to use teleportation. But even if you use free movement, you still need to use the teleport in a few areas since there's no way to jump normally or attach to ladders. There's also no crouch button, so you do have to physically duck down to get under things, which kind of feels weird. Turning is one thing that I don't care for personally. It uses the A and X buttons on both cameras to turn left or right after a quick fade in and out. The button placement ends up making it so that you can't really turn left while you're walking with the stick, and it can take a second to turn a full 180 degrees. But with that said, I don't think this game is actually that much harder in VR. Aiming is definitely harder, so ammo-hungry weapons aren't exactly the best idea, but you can still work around that. Since you always have your gun ready, you have just as much maneuverability as anyone else, and you can do really beneficial things that normal players can't, like hitting multiple targets with dual wield weapons or flying around corners, you actually end up having a little bit of an advantage. That, and I swear VR players get some kind of damage reduction. I know when you sprint, most perk decks restore either health or armor in VR, with armor being particularly strong since there's a damage gate mechanic on it, but sometimes it feels like you can just take more punishment in general than you can in the normal version. Next up is Serious Sam VR. I love Serious Sam, and I fully understand a VR version of this game would not hit the same way, since Serious Sam is a very specific kind of FPS. But god damn it if it isn't fun anyways. Like the others, this is practically a one-to-one -one port of the game itself, with no changes made to anything but the way the player interacts with it. In the normal game, you can have one weapon out at a time, and there are restrictions on how fast you can swap weapons and fire. But in the VR version, some weapons have an almost uncapped fire rate, and you're always dual wielding. The reason this kind of fucks with Serious Sam is because these games are largely around analyzing whatever combat situation you're in and picking the best weapon for that situation, often going between multiple weapons within seconds while accounting for the swap speed and your resources. But in VR, with two weapons out at a time, worse accuracy leading to less consistency in taking targets out, and the change in perspective than what I'm used to in these games, they become something different. I won't say easier overall, but in some places it absolutely can be. Like for bosses, you could just burst them down with dual double barrel shotguns since there's absolutely no reload time or damage fall off on these things, and they hit as hard as rocket launchers. The biggest issue this game has in VR is that Serious Sam involves a lot of flick shots. Two major enemies charge at you and end up behind you when they miss, so if you fail to take them out while they're in front of you, you have to turn around very fast to get them. And in general, this game has a lot of encounters where enemies can spawn all around you, so you have to be pretty on top of things to make sure you don't get swarmed. Out of all of the games I've played, this is definitely one of the most physically intensive so far. Also, the HUD is absolutely dog shit. It's the same as the PC version, but it just moves around if you turn your head enough, which can end up with a lot of cases where you can't even see your health. And it's also not layered properly between the lenses, so you really have to focus to see how much health you have. But overall, it's still really fun due to the perspective and scale, and this game throws an absolute shitload of enemies at you, so when the action does get really hectic, it becomes so much more nerve-wracking. 
At this point, Dunes is now my new morning exercise routine. So, the last game I'll talk about actually is a VR exclusive game and is native to the Quest Store. But be warned, it has a demo on Steam, but not on the Oculus Store, which is... really dumb. This game is called Orbis VR, and it's a VR MMO that I've dabbled into since a friend recommended it to me. I bring it up because while I haven't touched the game much, and I'm not entirely convinced I'll enjoy it, it used the enhanced immersion and motion controls very well. Every class is very physical. Warriors have to swing their swords and block. Paladins have to charge up their hammer by holding it above their head. They can even throw the damn hammer, teleport to it, and then slam the ground for an AoE. Again, all done with physical movements. And there's even some really interesting classes, like a dude with a small cannon who physically loads various balls into his gun to fire them at allies or enemies to buff and debuff them. And you also have the ability to throw down a turret orb. Probably the most insane class is the Rune Mage, who physically has to draw spells and cast them. Some of the advanced classes really take a lot of skill to pull off and it shows. If you just start out, you'll wonder why the fuck you can't even cast spells because you'll just mess up the runes all the time. I could barely do it after a half hour of just sitting there and wiggling my controller like an idiot. Then I asked my friend to record a dungeon, and this Adderall-laced motherfucker is busting them out like there's no tomorrow. It was actually quite funny because he was in the tutorial area teaching me how to play, and whenever he started casting like a madman, he would invariably get people asking how he can even cast spells. Also... But, uh, okay, there's one last feature I guess I should talk about, and let's be honest, most people probably thought about it at some point as a passing curiosity, so I took the liberty to answer that. So yeah, adult performative arts. I decided to watch a couple videos on the native Oculus browser just to see what kind of a hellish dystopian future we can expect to live in. The answer is that... It's weird. It just feels like a more advanced version of stereoscopic 3D, so you get this weird uncanny valley feeling. It also varies heavily from video to video because of the different recording setups they use. Some look fine, others look really off like you're permanently cross-eyed and you have to try really hard to focus, and others are actually unwatchable. This could also vary based on headsets as well, I'm not sure. The effect kinda worked, I'll admit but I can't say I really enjoyed it. But now you know what to expect. So yeah, that's VR. It has been a phenomenal experience for the past few weeks and some of the most fun I've had in a good while. Playing non-VR games that have VR versions has given new life to many of them, and I can't wait to see what other crazy VR games or games of VR versions are out there. And you can bet that going forward, if there's a VR version of a game I review, I will mention it. I would actually commit crimes to get my hands on a Death Stranding VR, like jaywalking.